Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Caleb. Fellas, 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 welcome to episode 91 of the Down to Herf podcast. Yes, we are now keeping track. Uh, I have no idea why we didn't do this in the first place, but this is a podcast. Uh, this is episode 91 officially. Ironically, 91 is my absolute favorite number except for 8, and the only reason 91's in that conversation is 9 minus 1 is 8. So that's what happens when your sports number's taken, and you got to improvise. Uh, 91, also a good year, the year I was born. So uh, Me as well. Know, I'll take that as well. Wow, my boys. But oh. l- l- Let me just start things off real quick. Caleb, how you doing today, buddy? Good. Happy to be here. Uh, long day off tomorrow, so let's get down and start herfing. Geo, what's up, bud? Ready to get into a nice little fine cigar this week, and we're going to have some fun, boys. All right. Before we do that, I am definitely going to turn down these uh, rabbit errors. They are a little loud today, so I'm going to just uh, turn those down a little bit, and I'm going to give Geo the floor here while I do that. Geo, what are we smoking today, brother? <clears throat> well... Excuse me, sorry, I was getting my shit cut. But, uh, so we are today smoking, yeah, set it backwards there, <laughs> the Moistro de Saca. He uses his old poop cutter to get his shit cut. <laughs> he pulled out the poop knife, the poop knife I heard. All right. <laughs> Call back to an after. Children, him. children. Gio, the floor is yours. All right, we are smoking the Moistro de Saca Krakatoa, new release, just hit store shelves recently. This is a Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust product. And you know me, boys. These are always my favorite. These are one of the most, you know, or more unique cigars out there as far as it goes. They usually come in the coffins. And the retail on these bad boys usually, unfortunately for us, ain't cheap. So a single for this will start at $18.70. A stick, a box of seven, hundred and twenty-three dollars, and yeah, not not cheap for that there here. But as with any moisture to Saka, we've smoked a few on the show. They usually stand out for us. The details on this: we got a six by forty-eight Parejo with a spiral. There's something going on. You're good. Okay, Jerry, you confused me, bro. The Johnny Bravo hair was just like, oh, mama. Hey, mama. But anyways, to finish the details on the cigar here, as I was saying, it's a 6x48 Parejo. This is going to be Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan filler and binder, and there's a whole bunch of Nicaraguan. I'm reading some of the, uh, no, there's Sun Grown, there's Broadleaf, Criollo, Corojo. Apparently... You are supposed to get a flavor profile of sweet cedar, bright citrus, cafe, and earth. Cafe? I'm assuming. Cafe, as you may. You know, cafe au lait, coffee, cafe mocha, you know. I did get a little bit of that sweetness on the cold draw on the tip here, guys. Just the tip? Just the tip, a little bit of sweetness, you know, just saying. Now, this is going to infuriate Steve if he listens to this, because he... He says these are not sweet tip cigars. I did not get that. I I did did not not get that. I will just clarify. Initial cold draw, one thing of sweetness, took a second cold draw, it was gone. Just It was there. It was on the lips for a second and gone. So uh, just uh, maybe Steve adds a Yo, you're about to get messed up by the Sokka Squatch. Well, I don't know, fuck man. you up. I don't, it just it tasted sweet off the bat. It tasted like a little bit of candy. I didn't even eat any candy. Just saying. But uh, speaking of the tip of the cigar, there is a little unique feature on it. They called it a volcano coil at the end there, a little pigtail, if you will. So just another little unique feature of it. I had already cut mine. I'm sure we all did. So I don't know if you guys saw it. We're definitely going to have some fun with this today, boys. Now, again trying to think here oh we are going to be continue geo oh okay you're, you're waving me off i'm like should i shut the fuck up <laughs> no that thing sounds like a jet engine tonight 
Went yeah, off. definitely a little. Did it sound loud? Yeah, it's super loud. Do you want it off or? Just keep that thing off, dude. We got we got the other fucking filters in here. Yeah, it was it was going super loud. Yeah, it was like fucking insane, right? What the fuck's wrong with that thing? This will be, and I'm just throwing this out there. This will be the. I'm gonna have to bring that back. That's a, a an air filter, dude. That should not sound that way. Would you agree to that? Hundred percent. What the fuck is wrong with that thing? But go ahead, please, Geo, continue because this is going to be an amazing cigar, and and it's being hindered right now. By poorly constructed products, like dude, I that thing was <laughs> off. I don't know why. All it's right, still making all noise. right, we're dealing with it. We're just gonna fucking deal with it. I just looked at it and I went, okay. It was off. That red light was off, and now it's back on. Episode ninety two, episode ninety one. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fuck ah, it. We're, fuck. We're at ninety two. Fuck it. <laughs> no, we're at ninety one. Go ahead, Gio. Continue, please. And uh, so, guys, this is actually the seventh addition to the Moistro de Saka line, too. So. I mean, I have smoked quite a few of these. The uh, the now leave me the hell alone will you know will hold a soft spot with me forever. It is my first cigar I've ever smoked. It's the Lancero they have in this. Surprisingly difficult to get around here. Then you have the uh, the Bewitched, which we did on the show in a previous episode. Uh, I think that was when we had uh, I forgot who the guest was, but. Uh, then I've also had the uh, I'm gonna butcher it. I think it was like the knock the Nakama, Nakamatale or something like that. Or why the fuck can't I remember the name of it? The you, I know who th- I know what cigar you're talking about. Yeah, dude, I can't. I, I feel like I'm butchering it now. I gotta look it up. The Nakamale. Something. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I remember that. Now are these all names of volcanoes? Besides, like Krakatawa volcano. I volcano believe coral. that is the theme that they got going here. You know, takes a little book smarts to get that one, maybe. Uh, There's no way that Caleb just guessed that. I'm not looking it up. The laptop's here, but I didn't look it up. Is there a Bewitched? No, no, because there's the... Oh, the Unstolen Valor. Oh, Unstolen Valor. Uh, Yep, yep. that was another one. That is definitely probably not the name of a... Yeah, I think you're wrong, buddy. (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) We're worth a guess. Stupid. It's called the Naka Tamale. But I believe this is why this one is called the Krakatoa, because it had the volcano tip, but... very unique to this particular uh, Vitola. But, dude, there's a... Shit, what else was in there? Uh, I'll give you a unique tip. There's hey, obviously... Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and obviously, I haven't smoked it, but there is the unicorns in the Moisture to Saka line, if you guys want to drop some bank on those. That's a Moisture to Saka, the unicorn? Yeah. Like the OG unicorn? Mm-hmm. You know, I added the sticker on my laptop. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. Ooh. Look, I, I we like, have been known to slay a few unicorns on the show. Oh, so God, dude. I felt like it was appropriate. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking, too, in the line here. How did we forget about the exclusive, though? I know we fucked or we fucking smoked those. Uh, the Naka, Tamale. What else here? Leave me the hell alone. Unstolen Valor. We definitely did that. Maybe in our own time, not at here on the show. And now the Krakatoa. That's the newest one. Mm-hmm. Well... We always appreciate DTT. They put out very, very awesome products. Uh, Some of their cigars are fucking amazing. I don't know if you've ever smoked the Sober Mesa Brulee Blue, but fuck, that cigar is awesome. Um, Talk about a cigar that jumped up in cost. I remember the first time you got one, it was like $14. It might have been like $15, $16, but it was definitely in that ballpark. But that thing's up to like $30 in New York now. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Um, Caleb, what are we drinking and pairing this bad boy with today? Cool hat, by the way, too, at DTT. Um, Today, we are doing 1792 Sweet Wheat. So this is a straight bourbon um, out of Sazerac Company and Barton 1792 Distillery. This is a summer 2023 release. Uh, It's a 91.2 proofer. Got a nice little rust color on there. So it is aged for at least four years. It's not really specify the exact age when it originally came out because a, a sweet wheat first came out in 2015 and at that point it was an eight-year-old so it's a minimum of four years age it's not released same with the mash bill here it's undisclosed but um it's not going to have that high rye like most 1792 barton products this is going to be obviously more wheat that's going to give it that sweeter taste uh so this is you know 
not disclosed, but obviously you're going to get probably more than 51% of wheat. I'm going to guess that would you just based on taste alone. Uh, bottle goes for about 50 bucks MSRP. Glad I paid below that. Uh, good find here. Nice little find. Was looking for something else. Just totally came about this unexpectedly. What'd you say secondary on this is? These oh, things no. go for? Oh, secondary? Probably 80, 75, 80 bucks. MSRP is 50. I did not pay 50. I feel like I've seen this bottle for like $130 secondary. Oh, wow. Oh, God damn. You know what's real nice? I, I got one. Thank you, Caleb. Hey, I do what I can to help out the folks. Thanks, you know, buddy. I appreciate you. Caleb gets the sweet weed and the street meat. <laughs> <laughs> I let that slide. That was kind of, that was kind of funny. I let that slide. Um, guys, this is probably like onto my third pour. Uh, this is oh geez, ninety one proof, easy, easy sipper. Uh, I would not even suggest using an ice cube on this bad boy. Uh, very sweet, nice and easy to drink. It's like uh, candied fruits. I don't know what else you guys are getting out of this, but man, I can't wait. It's gonna be a nice long fun night. I'm you gonna know, tell you what I'm getting on this. Not sweet to- wheat. I was going to say, I'm going to get... He's like, I don't know what you're getting off on this, but uh, I'm getting drunk. You're getting off on it? Yeah, I'm getting off, baby. I like that. I'm going to tell you this right now. For all you gentlemen out there partaking, I'm definitely not getting off. It's no nut November. Okay. <laughs> Stay strong, my brothers. Yeah, that'll Stay be strong. the uh, the, ne- the version for after no nut November will be the uh, 1792 cream of wheat. Ooh. <laughs> well, I like that. I already failed, so I'm saying like November is nonstop nut November. Let's go. I tried to uh, actually explain No Nut November to my father, <laughs> and my dad was like, the fuck what is the wrong? fuck are you talking about, dude? And uh, ironically, it was on Thanksgiving, like, I don't know, three, four years ago. Dude knocks over, somehow, in the night, just by mistake, knocks over this big dish of, like, mixed nuts. And I said, dude, look at this dude just nutting all over the goddamn floor in the family party. <laughs> Couldn't even make it through a family party without no nut November. Uh, November. It was fucking. It was hilarious watching him like sweep it up. It was uh, embarrassing. Got to pick up all his nuts. Yep. Hey, bro. Just remember, you're one of his original nuts. <laughs> That's true. I don't like to think about that. <laughs> I don't like to think about how like um, your parents were doing it. <laughs> That's what was going on there. It's like the lot. Like I said, I go back to the logic lyric. He goes. Son, you know why you the greatest alive? Cause you came from my balls. <laughs> you missed you missed a the lyric there. You missed Person. you missed a word. Nope, I can't say that word. I was gonna say if you're gonna say it, say the lyric, bro. <laughs> Listen, don't logic. If you that. about that life, be about that life. I ain't about that life. <laughs> <laughs> uh one last thing to hint about on this uh bottle. Uh again, I said it came out eight uh eight years ago already now in twenty fifteen. Uh Barton decided to do this, uh, the sweet wheat. It was the first time they did it because uh, the weeded bourbons were getting popular with W.L. Weller, Maker's Mark, uh, Heaven Hill has Larceny and the Bernheims. So that's why 1792. And also all around those same areas was like, yeah, let's just go out and uh, put one out there. And again, like I said, they originally started with an eight-year-old bourbon, minimum four now, but who knows what the exact age is now. So they just started trying to compete in the wheat market. I think we have a few wheats uh, coming up on the show. I know we for sure got the Antique 107 coming up. Um, we definitely have some more weeded products. I'm so for that because I love weeded bourbon. Uh, I don't think I make that a secret at all. I tell people all the time. I think that wheat is the absolute best mash bill, uh, like a nice uh, sweet wheat. I-, I hate to come back to the name of the bottle, but, I mean, I just feel like that product, when you're talking about your, like, again, your Wellers, your Pappies, uh, Pappies, your Pappy Van Winkle products. Those are all, <laughs> all weeded. Those are all weeded bourbons. I'm getting so. I'm getting a lot of like candied fruits on this. Very sweet. Nice to drink. It does remind me of that Weller antique. Not going to lie. I haven't had that recently, but uh, when you said that, one of the first things taste drew me right back to that. Way higher proof, though. Oh, without a doubt. 91.2. This is low. I gotta say, yeah. I don't remember the last time I've actually had 1792. It might have been the last time we had a bottle on the show. 1792? Yeah. Have we done 1792 on the show? No. Really early. Maybe. I don't know. Early. You had a bottle of barrel proof. Maybe we just were drinking it. I still have barrel proof. Full proof. Full proof. It's yeah. a full proof bottle. Yeah. I know where you can get a really sweet deal of single barrel full proof. Just to hit me up. It's really good. No, it's one of the best stuff that... Are you they put on out. It? No, don't sleep on it. Great, <laughs> uh, great price, great value. If you're looking for a single barrel foolproof, uh, hit me up. Uh, 
you're not going to be disappointed because a long time ago, 1792 was doing these single barrel releases and they could not sell these cases this year. However, whatever they did, 2023 was the year for them. These cases, these barrels sell them like hotcakes. So got to get them before they go out. I, um, I like 1792. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, uh, you remember the, I hate to bring it back. Geo. The Bills game that we lost with 13 seconds left. There was probably a quarter. (laughs) All right, yo, Vince McMahon, relax over there. Listen. (laughs) You got to admit that was good. (laughs) Yeah, listen, y'all. But uh, you remember, like, maybe the last quarter, how back and forth it was? Yeah. Uh, Do you remember me going up and grabbing one of the foolproof bottles I had? I was like, all right, boys, we're going to need this because this (laughs) is getting real emotional right now. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I like seventeen ninety two. Don't sleep on it. Uh, pick it up if you can. It's very reasonably priced, no matter what specific type, foolproof, single barrel, uh, the sweet wheat. Did you hear me? Like one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty dollars. I saw the sweet wheat going. For. I can't believe it, man. I paid less than fifty. So did I. Let's go, yeah. baby. Kaching, Johnny Manziel, baby. Get that money. Speaking of sports. <laughs> Speaking of sports, I think uh, main topic for the show, uh, maybe some uh, cigars and sports, the mixture of the famous faces and the people that we see in the industry smoking some cigars. I mean, I think that's part of it, but I, part, yeah. I also really wanted to touch that it's election day today. It's November 7th. Yes, guys, this is a pre-recorded show. Hard to believe that we can't say shit live. <laughs> But and uh, we would be fired if we fucking did this show live. And uh, I hope no one forgot the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November from V from, v from Vendetta. Great movie, by the way. So vote, uh, like V would say as well. Yeah, Caleb would be in like the... The Guy the, Fox mask. Well, isn't that whole movie, the uh, they make a fake virus and scare yeah. everybody? And it, to wow, control that sounds, the population. Yeah, it, wow, it sounds awfully... <laughs> I wow, that sounds like it. Did that happen in real life? Uh, a lot of modern day ties. That some people might say, some critics would say, or some fans in the movie and the comics would say that. Just maybe. like uh, you know, like media controlling everything and scaring and calling, causing like mass hysteria in the in the public, setting uh, what is it curfews? You know, you can't be out past this time, and only it can go out start your day at this time. So I don't know. You ever think that like? The government steals ideas from these movies and shit. They're like, this is genius. This is, this is an awesome movie. We should do this. Hopefully no one's watching Congress it. and like the they're all, again, we've talked about this on the show. They're laughing at us peons smoking their cigars, drinking whiskey. And they're like, dude, that would be a great idea. We should do that. Let's see if we can get away with it. Fuck it. Hey, I got an idea. It's the common cold on steroids. Like Geo. How the fuck does this joke keep Common coming cold. Out? This is bullshit. Common cold, COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Caleb is our common cold, and Geo is our COVID-19. Look how strong it is. You it could, could be, kill everybody. You could be Omicron. <laughs> or, be, or whatever. Del- X, Delta variant. XYZ I'm strains. like, you know, I, I had a comeback, but it, I didn't quite come back. Delta variant. Yeah, yeah long COVID. Might kill you one day. Yeah. But no myocarditis. But to get to, no. t- to touch on this parody, though, right? The senators, the House of Representatives, the president, they're all just sitting around. Joe Biden's facing the wrong way. Uh, the boys are talking. Well, I got a great idea. Let's fucking just do it. This would be awesome. It's definitely some, like, southern lunatic. George Soros and shit. But uh, so, yeah, to go back to the whole election topic, Caleb had the bright idea here that we should talk about our, you know, most most disappointing or most shocking elections of all time. Not just pull up politics, though. He also brought up sports figures. Uh, I don't really know where the show is going. We're going to probably talk on both. We'll see. Well, we'll, we can talk about election season first, maybe, because that's fresh. And we can get into upsets, disappointments, and surprises. But not just elections, like... You ever think sports awards, like who's going to get MVP, comeback player of the year? We could talk on like things like that, like who had a stellar breakout year and then they just didn't win at the end. Or like what team was such a big bust to have it all. And 
or not a big bust, but a favorite, and they just bust. Oh, I got they one. The two thousand seven Patriots. <laughs> big bust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did not partake in no, not November. That was a big bust. Yeah, there you go, buddy. It didn't happen in November, but yeah, it didn't. But yeah, I I just had to get a jab because he's a Patriots fan. <laughs> Could have been the, could have been like the only nineteen and 0, 20 and O season ever. I'm gonna be honest; it's probably never happening again. Statistically, sure, it could happen, but probably not. All right, so uh, you want to get into some presidential elections first? Sure. I got a little throwback for you guys. This one's going way back to 1844. Oh, One of the biggest upsets of all time was James K. Polk over Martin Van Buren, baby. You heard it here first, then down to her podcast. What? <laughs> it was a real Barton Burner back in the day. Can you tell me, just for our audience sake, you know, you could maybe learn something here on the on the herf. Uh what did either of those people ever do? Well, obviously both presidents. Uh so Martin Van Buren was a big uh wartime commander at one point. Uh and okay. he was So more of a man than literally almost every single man in the United States. Yeah, especially modern day. So he was the pre- presumptive favorite going into this uh, election. It was a very heated convention. He was going up against James K. Polk, who was an obscure congressman and Tennessee governor at the time. And who was he, the incumbent? Uh, Van Buren was the okay, incumbent. So, so Van Buren was heavily favored. He should have been yeah. favored to win uh, going against James K. Polk. Um, dark horse candidate came through on the ninth ballot. So he was like a ninth favorite in the seatings of, in 1844. So not even close. A uh, very young guy at the time, 49 years old, uh, for the Whig Party. So this is way before the, the Republican Party. Uh, yeah. I, I, I remember this. It just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> so a lot of people. Would the just, old Whig Party. The old, the old Whig Party. You never heard of it. But um, so they used to say, oh, the Democrats must be poking fun at us. You know, that's what they write in the papers and stuff like that. Um, Van Buren wasn't a fan of them they're like this guy's too big of a drinker and a poker player and a gambler and that makes me think wow he's one of us he's got my vote i would like this polk guy but, what did when, so he, they basically elected caleb <laughs> <laughs> so hold on let me just touch on this <laughs> yeah, real ahead, quick. what did polk do during his pregnant uh, like uh presidency <laughs> uh, the, 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 he's pregnant Listen, uh, what did he do during we've his, all had a lot of pregnancy term. on the brain the last few months yeah dude i just had a baby <laughs> So you got pregnancy uh, brain as well. Yeah, it I didn't out. I didn't personally have the baby, but <laughs> I feel like I sure did. Hey man, it's 2023, who knows. But um anyway, so what did he do? He won on his platform. He was manifest destiny. US expansionism, won the annex Texas, go all the way to the Oregon and Yukon territory. Uh Oregon territory, Yukon, Washington territory. And this was a lot of things that Van Buren didn't want to do. So that's why he won. Um, he emerged as a surprise because he won by only 38,000 popular votes. You know, not a lot at the time back then, taken in consideration the population and who voted. But at 1844, big upset. Uh, Van Buren didn't see it coming. Knocked the wig right off his bald ass head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the history lesson. I mean, I, this is like drunk history with Caleb. It's actually, uh, it's kind of funny. That would actually be a great a great thing to do because i love history and i love drinking i also feel like it's probably copyrighted to be drunk and talk about history on a show it's like definitely i mean drunk history is a fucking show yeah we just can't call it drunk history um drunk politics no (laughs) (laughs) it's pretty damn close (laughs) all right anyways we'll figure (laughs) brainstorming that one put it in the back one wasted wigs (laughs) (laughs) oh no (laughs) I just want to throw this out there. This is no joke. Me and Gio just sidebarred for two seconds, made eye contact, and we both said the same thing. This fucking cigar Cigar is is fucking sick. And you know what's real nice? We weren't going to smoke this. This wasn't the plan tonight. This just kind of happened. Uh, I do want to just take a little second and thank DTT for sending us these cigars. Uh, We didn't buy these, but uh, thank you. To DTT, Steve Saka, thank you guys. Yeah. Uh, these are awesome. What was it, uh, Anna that sent it? You're the best. Appreciate you. Constructed very well as well. Look at that nice ash. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, dude, you could literally pick it up. That's actually impressive. That's insane. I don't think I've ever saw you do that on the show. I've never done that, but like literally like the, the little bit that came off, I mean, you can literally pick the ash up 
and, and then and then just and you just put it down. It's like when Caleb talks about stack of dimes, that's a stack of dimes right there. Fucking awesome. Not literally dimes. Like who bets with dimes? You know, get those real poker chips. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. Back in the 1840s, maybe a dime was a lot bigger of a bet, homie. Oh, it's probably made with real silver, so you know, it might be worth its weight. You know. Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. So is that that your pick? Or you got anything else for us? Well, yeah, that see. would that would be like a big real life upset. presidential. I mean, there's some obvious ones. <laughs> that would be a real big some upset. some. Yeah, I would say there's some there's some ones that uh, happen. recent history. There's quite a few. Uh, like we can. I got those under some different uh, topics, like uh, disappointments. So uh, a big disappointment was Truman in '48, supposed to be in real easy victory, uh, defy the odds. Who beat him? Eisenhower. Dewey. Thomas Dewey, uh, he was at New York State. Um, Wait, did, I uh, it, was Eisenhower before Truman? After. He was in the 50s. Dude, I don't know shit about presidents. Bro, you gotta get up on your history, man. This this kind of episode <laughs> makes me look like I'm on the spectrum. Because I don't know shit about this stuff. So, so this was like a big disappointment, especially... They say it's a big disappointment on like Truman. They should have won a lot more. Then he did. So he lost to Republican Governor Thomas Dewey. Uh, he was Dewey was projected to win, but they're saying Truman should have won a lot more. He only got twenty eight out of forty eight states. And but th- Truman won. He did win, but they okay. still consider I've... his victory a disappointment. They're saying he should have just trashed Thomas Dewey, like should have mopped, mopped the floor with him. And Jerry, also, you were right. Eisenhower was the president after Truman. So there you go, man. So okay, uh, that's what I thought. Oh, 48, 50s. So yeah. fifty three. Yeah, that's. I almost like Caleb had me second guessing myself. I was like, "Cause I misunderstood. I Ike, thought he said do we win." I was absolutely like, came after Truman. Yeah. Now, most people criticize Truman a lot for his actions during World War II, but as far as leaders go, one most would agree that his actions were very integral for ending the war. So, a uh, very, I guess, controversial president. You know. Dude signed off dropping Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. Like, but also at the same time, you wonder how different would it have been if he didn't do that? Thank like, you for your service. Like, do we really have the fear of nuclear war, like, constantly if that doesn't there? Because, yo, fucking parts of Japan are still fucked up from that. Radioactive shit, man. Like, oh. it, crazy time in history. So Truman should have won a lot more states. He did main, He did win Ohio. He lost New York, which is crazy for New York to be Republican. At the time, he also lost New Jersey, which is well. But I guess if you're from Jersey, New York, you like the president. You like the governor, Dewey. So, But Truman, as a Democrat, should have carried those states. And they're just saying like it was such a disappointment. He should have won by a lot more than he did. So that's where the disappointment comes in. I mean, good victory for him and the Democrats, but... They're they're saying by the all all accounts forty eight should have been a lock for Harry Truman. So that's that's your big upset in the election. Day Not an upset. That's a disappointment. Like a bad performance. Like you yeah. still won, but you should have blew him out. Instead, you won by three. I'll go with one. Here's yeah. my here's my biggest overall disappointment. Our current president <laughs> Biden. There you go, folks. You heard it here first. I was uh, <laughs> I was curious if it was going to come up, and of course it did. Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as biggest upsets, like, I think there's probably two recent elections that come to mind. Obviously, 2016 was a crazy one. And uh, 2008, like, not a lot of people expected Obama to win. Yeah. It was kind of close, yeah. Who was it, Mitt Romney Romney. that he was going against? Uh, Was it McCain or was it McCain the second one? It was Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was leading going into, like, one of the third or fourth debates. And he said one... One screw up line, and he did it. He messed it up, and pretty much Obama just ran away with it for the rest of the year. Do you year. remember what the line was? I can't. I I could search it real quick. I uh, he said something. He was winning. He won the first two three debates, and just one screw up, and it cost them his whole election. Um, was it when like they they put like, the family dogs up on the car? <laughs> Didn't they have them in like the turtle? That actually could have. That actually could have been it. Yeah. Um, hold on. And people were like, what the fuck? Didn't they put the family dogs in? You know, remember like the turtles you'd put uh, on the top of the car when you traveled? I think yeah. they had like their family dogs in like cages on the top, tied to the top. I think that was kind of like people got upset about it. I didn't care. 
They're dogs. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I I, just, that probably sounds really bad on my part, but like, dude, have you ever tried to travel as a as, as a dog owner? You either have to bring them motherfuckers or like dog sitter, kennel them or dog sitters. Yeah. There's nothing more inconvenient than owning a pet and trying to do a family vacation. So I understand where the Romneys were coming from. They were like, you know what? We'll just bring them. Fuck it. I don't know, man. See, at the time, that was a weird one. I don't know if we could have had a president Mitt. It just doesn't sound right. I mean, it doesn't. Have, it's not a presidential name, you know? But I wasn't even able to vote at that time. I just thought, you can't have a president from Utah. I was, and I'm going to let you know I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't vote in that election. And you, you it were was the voting, first. It you was, were a voting age. It was the first election I could vote in. And I yeah. didn't. I just didn't care about politics. It, well, they tried to explain the importance of it, and 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 like remember government and economics. Yeah. Mm. First of all, we don't need to know that shit, man. We need to learn fucking taxes when we're in school. But you know what? I an APR. You know what APR is? Uh, interest rates. Yeah, but I'm saying, why the fuck don't we learn about that shit? Annual that's percentage the shit, rates. Yeah, that's the shit that affects your life in the future. So, you know what? I'm not going to dog you for not voting, because especially if you're young and you don't know, I, I feel like if you if you don't know or you're not informed, you shouldn't vote, because you're just tossing a vote away. Well, you're well, 32 years old, and I can tell you, you have no right. You you couldn't judge me if you wanted to. Well, I was younger. I come to find out, point. I made it a staple mark today. To get out there and vote. What about you, Gio? I voted. In our local elections? Because there was nothing super important this year. No, but... just one that I hope changes. Oh, I'll just throw it out there. Yeah. Fuck pulling cars. Yeah, Fuck him. Yeah. He's a fucking jerk off. I, I think the same way, but... I Did you go out and vote against him? No, but I still think it. So you have no say. Well, I thought about it last time when I voted. Here's an opinion, or, or, or here's a question I have for our audience. Do you think you have the right to question policies made by somebody in an election that you didn't vote in and you had the ability to vote are you allowed to bitch and complain what do you think absolutely Gio? not shut the fuck up if if they're like well i mean you know we live in new york state and and, and you it know our vote matter. doesn't count no nah, that's not yeah that are you allowed to say that i know just go go vote yeah listen vote. no matter what it is you should like i didn't but you know what yeah i'm not gonna complain about it but I, like yeah for all those who don't vote like especially presidential elections I, I don't give a fuck what you say. What about you, G? I actually, you know, uh, our most recent mayoral election showed me how important it actually is to go vote because... Even in those stupid little fucking nonsense primaries, yeah, they're important. You because, have to go. You have to vote. Well, you that, have to. Well, that was very important, especially locally, because that affected a oh. lot of a lot of people... And being a part of that ground game really shows you what it's all about. And uh, that's a big reason why Mitt Romney failed in 2008. He didn't have good ground game, and he didn't have good youth support, the 18 to 25 support. So big reason why he lost. I just think that it was, I never in, like, I'm sure it's happened in my lifetime, but to see it firsthand, a write-in candidate win, like, listen, Buffalo is a, still considered a major city in New York State, like, Write-ins don't usually win in major cities. They don't and, call it the Queen City for nothing. They yeah. call it the Queen City because it's the second biggest to the king, which is obviously NYC. Yeah. Like, that would that is very, very impressive what I saw with that. And, like, so, guys, I mean, obviously, you're either going to be pissed off at whoever won your, you know, town board supervisor vote or whichever. If you voted, good on you. Smoke a cigar. And when you're watching the news, be like, fuck that guy. I didn't vote for him. Exactly. But but we we touch on like the importance of like presidential votes. Uh I remember listening to people complain when obviously Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton. Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember it. I remember people crying about it. But I also remember thirteen thousand people in our country voted for Harambe, the dead gorilla. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> See, and now those are people. Granted, you swayed 13,000 votes, but those are people who should not vote. Like, 13,000 people. You wasted your vote. Voted for a dead gorilla from the Cincinnati Zoo. Not only I that, if you follow people on social media, like on Instagram, TikTok, and stuff like that, I know people who threw thousands of votes for Don Mazzetti. 
<laughs> I'm not even joking. For Don Mazzetti. Like, you know, like, I, that's somebody I could get behind. <laughs> Bro science guy. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> Have you guys seen the uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia uh, episode? It's a season finale. Yeah. Oh, where, yeah. Where they did the whole the campaign one where uh, like they were pretty much responsible for every major event in the like, year. 2020. Like Giuliani with his hair, his black hair drying up. Cause that was, and it, well, that it, was like, on Frank. It leaked down his face. Exactly. It was cause of Frank and, uh, the, the write in votes the, the getting fucked up because, uh, Dennis and Dennis Charlie, and, and or, Mac wanted to fucking, uh, who the hell were they going? They were trying to figure out. I can't remember who they were trying to vote against, but all the votes went into that. It was just really like it was fucked up, but it was funny, and it, it shows you the importance of it of like getting out there and voting in your local elections, getting out there and voting in your presidential elections. We can sit here and talk politics all day, obviously. Yeah, we don't really get too political on the show, but go vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, in terms of like as long as you do it. I respect you for it, no it, matter what, it, voicing your opinion. If you're a person that bitches about politics, you absolutely have no voice. In bitching, if you don't go out and vote, I just say uh, make sure you're informed. Make an informed decision, mm-hmm. and if you're not informed, you're probably off just staying out of it and not voting. No. Uh, although people on both sides are going to try to assuage you, I just think if you're uninformed and you're uncaring, just stay out of it. I don't know; it, it's not worth it. Like because writing a write-in or a third party or something or an independent, it just takes away from the major two. Which I mean, hey, if you're a political strategist, maybe you want that. But if you're just like the uninformed person. Probably just better sitting this one out. All right. Now, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. For another major upset, guys. This isn't quite politics. Kelly Clarkson over Justin Guarini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, original American Idol. I feel like I watched the OG American Idol with my parents. That was Every my mom fucking, fucking What night? That was season one, right? Yeah. yeah Justin Kelly. One, yeah. And then season two was Clay Aiken and Ruben, right? Uh, yeah, they might have been three. I know Bo Bice and what the fuck Carrie Underwood was one, ain't it? Yeah. Ah, now you know that. And now that, she does our fucking awesome Sunday night football yeah. every week. That Clay Aiken, Ruben Stuttered. Uh, that would have made an interesting video. It's two different fellas. Isn't Ruben Stuttered dead? Oh, is he? <laughs> I, don't know. I think he died. <laughs> R.I.P. Then. Really? I don't know. I'll, I mean, I'll look it up if you guys want. Yeah, Google yeah, it really quick. Because I thought Ruben I, Stuttered. Yeah. It's definitely gonna pop up. Yeah, he's uh, he's still alive. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I can assure you, his music career died. <laughs> oh, too soon for that joke. Too soon. What? It didn't. No, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. What has he done? Well, here's the thing. Like, Did Clay, didn't Clay Aiken have a couple songs? Some shit. Like yeah. That. Who won? Was it Ruben or Clay? Ruben or? definitely Ruben. be. All Ruben right. definitely be Clay Aiken. I remember that. Yeah. I don't know. That was like that was a big thing because like. I remember people saying, like, he just didn't look the part of, like, a superstar. Like, he was this, like, overweight dude and, like, just a departure from the I own. don't think that matters because here, here I'm going to throw this out there. Times have changed so much. Look at dudes like Luke Combs, country superstar. Look at dudes like, there's a fucking legitimate ex-criminal running around in the country industry called Jelly Roll right now. <laughs> Sorry for any jelly, jelly Roll fans out there, but... I think even my wife listens to Jelly Roll. I mean, a guy with a face tat like that, he goes on podcasts, he tells what he did, all the drugs, the robberies, he tells it he like He married is, an yeah. ex-prostitute. Good, Good for, for him. him. Who is kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just throwing it out there. So you, you can uh, turn a hoe into a housewife? You, I, apparently you can, but I, I, I'll i tell you what, she's probably never been treated better. Yeah. The dude had, uh, you know, he, he's ground up built. I mean, fuck, man. People can change for the better. Moral of the story. There you go, man. There you uh, go. You know what? I got another disappointment. I know we're on surprise disappointments. Oh, God. This is not an election one. I think this is a sports-related one. Um, I'll tell you guys. I know you guys are big Bills fans, but I'll tell you what. Someone who's not winning comeback player of the year this year, not going to be DeMar Hamlin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. he ain't with it. Dude, that's so low, bro. <laughs> Too soon? Why do you say that, though? Because uh, he's only played 18 snaps this season, so he's not going to win comeback player of the year. He did play. I, I'm just throwing this out there. Not saying DeMar Hamlin's a great player. I don't think he's that good. Uh, I, there was an entire Barstool skit on firing DeMar Hamlin. 
Did you see it? Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with like, how are you going to fire that guy? I'm just saying, like, how do you fire him? They're like, I don't know, man. Maybe we should have a heart to heart with him. Oh. And they're like, you can't do that. You can't have a heart to heart with Demar Hamlin. <laughs> the bad jokes, tasteless jokes, whatever. They're funny. If you have a good sense of humor, they're funny. Yeah. But throwing it out there, he was a part of the Bills' biggest win this year. He did play in that game. Yeah. What game was that? They got a couple of losses now. They absolutely spanked the shit out of Miami. All right. Another, another, hey, boots. Another fraud football team in the NFL. Listen, Dolphins we can't talk Bills. much about frauds right now because right now our division is just so wide open. I'm going to just throw it out there. Do you think it has <laughs> anything to do with our defense being absolutely decrepit? Uh, we now have four injuries, four pro bowlers out on our defense. We're struggling to even find people to play positions. We have our... Our starting safeties dropping in playing linebacker. Listen, That's how bad our defense is right now. Here's the fucked up thing. Our defense is actually keeping us in there when we need to. Like, we're not going to get too much into sports. I can't talk about sports. Sorry, but, you know, I, our I, offensive I, coordinator. Start talking trash. about DeMar Hamlin. I got to defend. Sorry. I didn't want to keep it all election related. I thought that'd be a funny uh, disappointment because everyone thought he was going to win comeback player of the year. Like, the betting odds for that were in uh, almost the lock he was going to win. I mean, he very well still could. He still came back from dying. I think it's going to be Bryce he Hall. He was dead, dude. I think it's going to be Bryce Hall. Brees. 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 At least know his name if you're going to say he's going to win it. Guys, I'm not too good with English and words. And also, I feel like most comeback players of the year are on a playoff team. Mm. I don't know. The We're Jets, making the fucking playoffs. The Jets could still do it. Yo, listen, I'm going to take this. I'll take this on the <laughs> chin. The Bills are still winning the division. All right, Boots, you heard it. Fuck Miami. I'll take it on the chin. The my Bills are still going to win the division. My team's out, so my opinion. We're going to be like the AFC South. Yeah. All the teams are so bad. Sub-par. But the Bills are going to get in at like 7-9, and nine, and they're still going to go to the AFC Championship. Sub-500, and you can make the playoffs just because yeah. your division is like choppy. What was um when when uh, the Giants beat the Patriots in their undefeated they were a wild card team? They were nine wild and seven. card team nine and seven. It exactly, happens. it uh, happens all uh, the time. Seahawks made it at seven and nine because that week, uh, NF, what is that NFC North or whatever? Or, was that the year they made, won the Super Bowl? It was when Marshawn Lynch had that like incredible run where he ran over like everyone and scored the game winning touchdown. Beast Quake. That was they were seven and nine and they made it to the playoffs that year. So it, I mean, hey, you could have a five hundred record to make it. Did so. they win the Super Bowl that year? Seven. And I nine. don't think so. I no. Can't remember. no, probably not. Right. No, they were dominant the year they won the Super Bowl. Who cares? But whatever. I'm just saying. Fuck Russell Wilson, too. Because we yeah. play Denver in the week this comes out. Let's ride, bitch. Money line. Betting the Broncos that game. What are they getting? Oh, I'll take At a least look. 12? Nah, no, I don't care. No, money yeah, I don't line. Care. Money line's We'll talk about this today. later. We'll talk off air on this. Uh, all right. Election surprises. Recent memory. 2016. Uh, I think Clinton called Trump supporters all deplorable. And it, oh, set yeah. off a, it set off a chain reaction. Uh, she didn't hit key swing states like Michigan and Ohio. Uh, she just stuck to her East Coast elite, West Coast elite, uh, major cities. She forgot about small town America. You know, she did go. Where did she go? Where she brought out her hot sauce. And she was like, hot sauce. Everyone thought that was a funny little clip in 16. But uh, that was a surprise because almost every major news station, CNN, MSNBC, they all said Hillary Clinton, 95 percent chance of winning. And that election night, whoo, when those numbers started dropping for her and all the hosts got sad, oh, that w- they were shocked. They were surprised. I think they were sniffing their own butts, and they thought they knew shit, and they, they didn't know anything. It literally was. I, if, if you recall in history, and you can go back those seven years and just remember where you were, and you were like, holy fuck, the Don, he pulled off the craziest upset. It, he was upset. Yeah, that was definitely a wild she, one. She got upset. I mean, that's insane. I mean, Hillary Clinton is just not relatable to a lot of people. I just don't believe that. You, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of her when she was. You know, was I believe she was our junior senator? Yes, because uh, Chuck Schumer's been senator for since Nam. <laughs> but not, literally, he's old as dirt, dude. He is old as fuck. But now it's. Kristen Gilbrand, but oh, that's horrible. They were saying uh, up to 95, 90% chance of winning. Who? Uh, although she did win the popular vote, Trump won the Electoral College, so big surprise that he did win. Um, I That was one of the most recent memories you know, that I have. Or, you know what? Here's one. The Al Gore Bush one. 
That was tight. That was that 2000? 2004. That no, was two, 2000. 2004 was, was Bush's re-election year. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. So uh, that was that came that came down to the Florida re-election count. So it was 2000. No. Bush was president from 2004 to two, Yeah, no, 2000 to 2008. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I apologize. Now, what's weird about that is I remember like that dude had such a shitty presidency, man. He had to deal with such horrible shit. He had to deal with 9/11. He had to deal with Hurricane Katrina. D- that sucks. So, it was here- such a weird time like you were just one, he was just actually, as far as, like, comedy goes, like, I felt like he was just very easy to, like, make fun of. I I also feel like you're definitely going to bring up the golf clip. I, I was going to bring that, but there's, like, a Family Guy clip where it's, like, Bush was, like, not really going to Vietnam, and some guy was like, hey, Bush, let's go do cocaine and hang out with hookers, and he was like, all right, screw Vietnam, I'll do that, So because he had, like, a drug problem. <laughs> so very relatable to a lot of guys who uh, like to do drugs. I think I like his golf club, dude. He's just like the funniest shit though to this day about Bush's presidency was to me the the Hurricane Katrina relief like thing, and it's all these celebrities, and it's Kanye <laughs> just going. Mike Myers is like all nice and genuine. He's like, "Yes, we need help," and Kanye's like, "George Bush does not care about black people." I was like, oh, my God. I actually forgot about that. Yep, I knew Gio was going there. That's funny. If uh, you see Mike Myers' face, and then <laughs> it was, uh, it cuts to Chris Tucker right away, and Chris Tucker is like, he just said that shit. I know Jerry's going for that golf clip. That was right after 9-11, right? And he wanted to you know, hit a driver off the deck. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try and find the clip real quick. I was going to say, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Bush, you know, he did... Governed during some turbulent times. Um, you got the clip, or should I go over a little bit of election facts? So, yeah, surprise here. one. Oh, here it is. I pulled it up. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Israel, um, for those who yearn for peace in the Middle East, for those in the Arab lands, for those in Europe, for those all around the world who yearn for peace, we must do everything we possibly can to stop the terror. There are a few killers who want to stop the peace process that we have started, and we must not let them. For the sake of humanity, for the sake of the Palestinians who suffer, for the sake of the Israelis who are under attack, we must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank Thank you. Now watch this drive. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. I feel like that's something Trump would say. Probably. But this clip definitely didn't age well, huh? No, this clip is just like... Dude. <laughs> what a swing. Dude, this, this clip is like modern times repeating itself. Crazy. History repeats itself, man. I love it. Dude, not a bad swing, though. First not off, bad swing. Like, also, talk about... Relative. <laughs> wow. Oh man. History history rhymes and repeats itself. Always. It yeah. always it always comes back. It so, really does. So this is how close and tight this election was. We were like nine, ten years old at the time. So they had a month long court battle battle and uh, legal battles that was led by the you know, eventually decided by the Supreme Court in a five to four decision, Bush versus Gore. Obviously Bush won. But uh, Bush won Florida by only 537 votes, a margin of 0.009%. So, uh, surprise right there. Uh, maybe an upset for Gore or a disappointment for Bush that he should have won by more. But uh, then, you know, you know, we all know what happened after that. We got involved in a 20-year war afterwards. So, yeah, obviously, that, you know, terror just attacks. just ended a couple of years ago, and what an embarrassment that was. Yeah, I mm. mean, history just... Like I said, it repeats itself. Like, we can talk for hours on politics, I firmly believe, you know, within the next... We are just talking about the importance of voting. And 537 And, and votes. how great George W. Bush Jr.'s golf swing was. Yeah. It's all relevant, baby. <laughs> That's what you get from down to her. Well, guys, I think we've uh, had our fair share of politics. Jerry, unless you got some election stuff you want to contribute with. Is there any, like, sports ones, like awards that we could... 
that are in recent memory that we could talk about? I don't know. Like I'm thinking, trying to think ESPYs and. Nah, I, I I wanted to just touch on like. Oh, I got a very controversial one, but I don't old know. Old school all... like vote talk, election day shit. What happened to the like old school generations and how like like if you were a kid, yeah. you would ask your dad, "Hey, dad, who are you voting for today?" He'd be like, "None of your business." Yeah. Dude, None of your fucking business. I used to ask my dad all the time growing up. He'd never tell me. He'd say, I'm a Democrat on paper, but I vote for who I stick with on the main issues. I, well, I mean, we're what not, happened to that now? Everyone uh, announces, everyone that, announces it's on it. Facebook. And they, they fucking, I mean, social media absolutely ruined everything. I mean, people used to like take pride in their vote. Like, hey, no one knows who I'm voting for. I mean, think my- of those 13,000 individuals that voted for Harambe. I'm sure they didn't tell anyone. They probably took pictures of the election ballot, which is also illegal, by the way, so don't do that. They probably got in a little bit of legal trouble. I guarantee they're not that smart of people. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's none of your fucking business who I vote for. Yeah, I like, agree. I don't shove my shit down your throat. Shut the fuck up. Mind yours. So I oh. just remember, like, my dad. I remember the first, like, this is my earliest remember, like, memory of election day. I think it was Clinton versus Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. So I'm almost positive. I, I know my dad. He probably voted for Bob Dole, but he definitely, when I asked him, who'd you vote for? He was like, none of your business. And I feel like we've lost touch with that. That like. Just go vote who you want to vote. You don't have to fucking tell anybody. I didn't even talk about the election today, but I made it very public who I voted for on the show. <laughs> now, here's what's very interesting. I wonder how much that has not because kids talk like my dad voted for so and so. Maybe if we keep that, the kids probably would keep politics a little bit out of schools, which I think is. I think it's the teachers, though, pushing it. I think the teachers and faculty and staff push it. Maybe nowadays, not when we were growing up. I don't know. The whole wokeness thing. I'm just speaking from that point of it. Like, I don't know. Like, kids are obviously going to ask their parents things when they come home from school and all that. And, like, yeah, you know, that's an adult conversation. I got another one. Where's the mafia in voting these days, you know? that They helped uh, John F. Kennedy get elected in Cook County, uh, Illinois, where he won 100% of the vote. Uh, highly suspicious. Like, who wins 100% of any vote? We're three guys together on a podcast. We can't get, agree 100% on anything. Or, I well, on everything. Or like, uh, you know, you know, the whole 2020 rumor was uh, Joey Molino of the Philadelphia mob. They were saying he was rigging all these precincts to vote for Biden. And like he comes out of jail and he's like, I fucking hate Biden. He's like, I'm a Trump supporter. Got a picture with Trump and everything at Mar-a-Lago. And everyone is accusing him of running the Philadelphia mob and trying to do it for the Democrats. So what happened to the mafia? Where are you guys at rigging elections? Come on. Stop your game up. This dude's calling for the uh, the mafia to come back and rig elections. <laughs> well, where did they go? What happened to them? <laughs> what happened? Christ. You know, speaking of elections, you know, I'm I I want to see some uh some I want to see some shenanigans going on, or I want. We already have know. enough dirty politics in this country. We just need to <laughs> yeah, right. Relax that shit. Right now, you can just uh, like uh, hijack a voting machine. And speaking of voting machines, remember those old school voting machines where you'd. Shut the blind behind you and you pull down the lever? Like when you're <laughs> with your parents? What happened to those? I have never used one of those. I never have Now used they one. just set you down at a fucking table and they put you into like a Scantron situation. It's like you're yeah. taking a test. And then you slide it through the little machine. Yeah. I Funny. So you know how they tell you which machine to put it in? It's this fucking <laughs> dumb girl. She that did it the wrong one. No, this stu- like, oh, okay, I gotta put it in machine B. Big... The biggest blue on black B that you could find. What does this fucking girl do that I heard her say the same thing? She goes to try and put it in machine A and it just keeps saying air. I'm like, well, all right. Can't handle simple directions. Why? Why? Shouldn't be voting. And I'm just shouldn't like, be working at elections. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't be working at elections. No, there no. This is just stupid. This is a voter. Like a helper. No, no, not oh, a helper. Oh, no, like a, a, she filled out her ballot. Oh, okay, all right. There's, you know, person ahead of me is going to put their thing in machine B. This other person, because there's like four people there ever at a max time, and oh yeah, I'm gonna go put mine in machine A because I want to go a little faster. 
No, no, you're a fucking idiot. Just do what they say. Why is this that hard? Shouldn't be voting. Correct. Maybe there should be IQ test for voting. I, I don't know. I feel like you would never get the vote. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, bro. If it's a I don't citizen, know, but if I, it's a citizenship test, he might not do well. <laughs> yeah, remember when Caleb took the citizenship test uh, and we failed? <laughs> That's a callback for anybody that is wondering what we're talking about. I lost the Geo. Okay, listen. (laughs) We have an entire episode called Caleb Gets Deported. Caleb fails the citizenship test. He's the most fucking Republican lunatic on the show. We don't call him fucking QAnon Caleb for nothing. He failed the test. Make sure you call back and go watch that one. That's a fucking funny episode. Gio got all the easy questions. I'll have it. You give him all the easy ones. <laughs> it was very, it was very biased. Hip, 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 hip. It was very biased. But uh, that being said, I mean, uh, we got some news we got to get to, right, Caleb? I mean, uh, we have a few things we got to get to, huh? Yeah, I think uh, lastly there was some cigar stuff and you know pop culture that we should get into really quickly here. Gio had a clip for you. You know, and I feel like we need to talk about this because I'm starting to notice a lot more of it lately. It's getting popular, man. So here we have the Raiders celebrating their first post-Josh McDaniels era win after beating up on the New York Giants. There's no sound because we didn't want to run into any YouTube copyright issues, but we got, you know, Max Crosby and the rest of the squad puffing out in cigars. Let's play the clip. They just look so happy. It's like, look at that fucking mega herf they're having there in fucking Las Vegas, dude. That's a, 50 plus people smoking cigars. That's a dope locker room, too, by the way. Looks like they're in a spaceship. Holy hell. Yeah. Dude, so Max Crosby's tattoos are fucking insane. He really does. So Gio made the comparison to my cousin Josh, who's he's been sort of regular on the show once in a while uh after her if you're an after her listener kind of does give me those vibes g that's a good comparison that's a more athletic version of your cousin just not a ginger yeah. <laughs> just not or as big a ginger physically. or as big yeah. first off crasby's a psychopath like, yeah. <laughs> imagine if he wasn't sober oh it'd be great to see him playing out there drunk what you know <laughs> you know he'd maybe be a little more wilder like Van Wilder. Yeah, get All on right, uh, we got some Patrol Gone Wild you wanted to get to here. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that first before the news or news before Patrol Gone Wild. Oh, what Patrol Gone Wild first. All right, let's get into that. Patrol Gone Wild, we're doing it big. Thank you for that. All right, so I'll start things off. I have man jailed over robbery bid with a cucumber. A man tried to dr- rob some bookmakers in Glasgow. This is coming from Scotland, so we're going overseas here. With a cucumber, and he's been jailed for 40 months. So this guy, Jerry Gary R., went to a bookmaker shop in Glasgow. Uh, he went right up to the counter, demanded the female worker to give him all the money, had this cucumber in a sock. It was a cylindrical object. You don't know what it is. What is this guy holding you up with? Is it a gun, <laughs> or is it a cucumber, or is he just happy to see you? Um <laughs> The female attendant refused to give him any money, uh, was assailed to the ground by several patrons of this bookmaker shop. So I, I wasn't sure what a bookmaker shop actually was. Like, I thought it was a place where you make books, but then I thought it was like a place where you place bets. It actually is just like a cafe in oh. Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I would have went with the bets place, like, a, yeah, like an I odds maker. I had no idea what it was. But also, man, what a pickle he put himself in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. So when police finally came, he said it was a joke and it was a dare. And he said, am I going to jail for this? And he later said, it was very stupid. I'm not a robber. He said it just went too far. So, uh, you know, he did get, what did I say? 40, 40 months. 40 months for this. So almost three years. That's Well, no, over three over years. Over three yeah. years. Yeah, three years is 36 months, dude. Here, you can steal a car, crash it into a house. You don't You don't get any jail time. Well, so don't mess you around. You are just in, misunderstood. So don't mess around in Glasgow, or you'll get the, what is it, the Glasgow smile? Well, they'll cut you up. you get the cucumber thrown at you. And... <laughs> you know what? He wasn't, you know, he wasn't happy to see anyone there. I guess you could say he got fucked by the long dick of the law that day. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, hopefully you like that little graphic that I made for you. All right, Gio, what do you got, bud? All right, I'm going to pull up my notes on this. This is one. an interesting story. Uh, I actually read a little about this. Yeah, this one was pretty wild. So a human skull was found inside a thrift store, of course, in Florida, 
where else would this be? And first off, I love the thumbnail. I had Caleb make it, and we got, you know, Macklemore in the corner popping tags. <laughs> but this was actually kind of discovered on accident. I guess uh, this was an anthropologist and happened to be walking around this thrift store and sees it. And, like, I guess he was mortified when he realized it was an actual human skull. Thankfully, the police went into research about it, and they don't believe foul play to be involved. I think this is, like, one of those uh, Ben Franklin research scenarios, Caleb. Oh. Oh. Caleb did bring those up. He said that Ben Franklin was, like, operating on people in a little fucking cave he dug under his house. You know, was Ben Franklin a serial killer or just an interesting guy into a human anatomy? Yeah, it was put up with the Halloween decorations originally. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Dude, talk about authenticity. Dude, someone got away with a crime. I don't know if it's a crime. They probably didn't know. They were probably like, look how real this looks. Well, someone you died. think that they were like disgusted? They touched it? Well, okay, like maybe they were just doing like that Shakespeare shit, to be or not to be, you know? What is the question? Caleb, what do you I'm know? What, do you know what that is from? Orthello. I think it was Macbeth. Oh, I don't know. I'm not too. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Macbeth. I didn't. I don't really brush up on my Shakespearean history. <laughs> you don't brush up. On <laughs> I do. I do know he died and was born on the same day. So that's about all I know. April 10th. Look it up. Yeah. All right. Actually. Yeah. Google that, Geo. <laughs> please. Right. I'm giving you permission to Google this. Died. That actually would be pretty impressive. If he actually called that. I think it's April 10th, yeah. Don't know the years, but April 10th. You have a computer in front of you. I'm, I'm guessing you can probably look I got up. things geared up for the next, you know, for the next whatever we're getting into, whatever. Next. So he was born in April of 1564. His actual birthday is not listed, but he did die on April 23rd of 1616. Uh, wrong. So now. Wrong Should have started smart. Sound smart. He, uh, but he did call at least the month he died. I mean, it's possible. So he was baptized April 26th. So, I mean, maybe. I don't know how they have that record there. But we just really went down a whole fucking rabbit hole this episode. I mean, we went politics. We went fucking skulls. I mean, Shakespeare. I'll, I'll hit you up with a Shakespeare. Uh, I do not have a patrol gone wild. I apologize this week, guys. Uh, it was a long, long week for me. Uh but Caleb did have a couple news stories he wanted to get into, so we can get into those if you would like. All right, we'll start things off first. We have Casa Magna Colorado Lancero returns in a new size. So this is out of Casada Cigars, of course. So they are beginning to ship their new Colorado Lancero 7x40 size, although they did put one out in 2011. It was an eight and one fourth by forty version of the Vitola. So uh, these are out of Nicaragua, of course, and the Dominican Republic as well. Kind of a blend. They're going to be fourteen dollars per per cigar. Come in boxes of seven, and there's going to be about a uh, thousand boxes. So pretty limited right here. Why does forty ring gauge seem thick for a Lancero? Maybe I'm all, like, is that the traditional size? Uh, I feel like they're usually like seven by thirty eight. So it's like a maybe a thicker. Thicker Lancero? I guess. I mean, well, it just seemed, it just sounded well, off. What's a traditional Lancero? 7 by 38? Well, that other one they put out, the eight and, a, 8 and a quarter, sounds like really long. That's pretty huge. So the traditional Cuban size of a Lancero is 7.5 by 38. So you were right. So it is a little bit bigger. Yeah. Due out soon. So be on the lookout for those. They look pretty limited this as well. This is Casada, right? Casada. Yeah. Uh, dude, first of all, I want to throw this out there. They actually make some very good cigars. Uh, this is Dominican product, correct? Um, entirely from Nicaraguan tobacco rolled at Casada's factory do- in the Dominican Republic. Okay, so Nicaraguan tobacco rolled in the Dominican. Okay, yeah. So uh, their Dominican shit is really, really good. They make some really good cigars. Yeah, I mean, we just did the Oktoberfest on the show. Yeah, yeah. good stick. Another good cigar, man. What else you got for us, Caleb? All right, so we have, this is news out of Scotland. We have uh, Scots, they're angry, and they want to put a freeze to further tax hikes on, Sc- tax hikes on Scotch whiskey. Uh, currently, their tax rate on whiskey is 10.1%, which Yeesh. is high as shit. I know how these people operate, man. This shit's going to be in the fucking harbor in no time. <laughs> yeah, the Scots, you know, they might be doing some... Uh, 
dirty business, uh, sneaking some liquor. Um, but yeah, nearly two thirds of Scots uh, support a freeze on this on a duty tax. Um, they're just saying this is currently with the economy and you know the Scot the government's trying to fight inflation and the people are like we can't do this anymore. It's a lot of money. We don't want to pay that. Uh, they're set to do a vote uh, this month in November on the twenty second. Uh, they want to just put a freeze, no more tax rates. Just keep it at ten point one. A lot of people are fighting for a lower rate as well. They just want this policy to pretty much end. They're very fed up with it. And, you know, in Scots, they put out a lot of scotch. So they want to drink and they don't want to tax. They don't want to pay tax on what they're making in country. I don't blame them. I mean, the cost of goods have significantly gone up on everything. Uh, I mean, even look at uh, just being in New York over the last couple of years. We've gone from 29% to 75%. Uh, whiskey and alcohol. I don't know if uh, it's gone up at all, but I mean, it's just the government, whatever you love the most, just know they will tax the most. So um, a lot of these reasons, not only to fight inflation, but a lot of these taxes are going because uh, tourism to the, to Scotland has increased 91%. So any, you know, hotels, hospitality, bars, restaurants, you know, hospitality and tourism has gone up so they're thinking you know set a tax will make more money uh scotland's number one tourist destination any guess do you guys want to guess what it is no scotland yard no distill <laughs> distilleries no. so they're thinking you know put the tax up on scotch generate more money uh it, it generates but the people are fed up especially locals so, so i mean the way that would just do that is keep it, it keep the tax the same for locals well, the locals are fed up. They don't want to pay the 10.1%. This is why it's important to vote. Yes. Make sure you're voting for your uh, town alcoholics because they're going to make it as cheap as possible for you. But 10%, that's high. 10.1% is very high on alcohol. Uh, it's fucking. What do we pay in New York? 8.9? I think about there, yeah, right around 8.25, something like that. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's very, very similar. Better than fucking 75%. I liked it. I liked it in Kentucky. Tax on whiskey was like two percent. Um, last story for the whiskey and cigar news with Caleb. Uh, the Tabernacle Knight Commander is hitting retailer shelves very soon. So it is a six by thirty-four, uh, fifty-two perfecto. Um, it's the same blend as the previous Tabernacle release, a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper uh, covering Mexican San Andreas binder, combination of filler and tobaccos from Honduras and Nicaragua. Um, however, it was aged in cedar for an additional 15 months. So that's why a little different, uh, inspired by the Ethiopian crown council where Nick Malala went, I uh, spent a lot of time in Ethiopia. So interesting. He was crowned night commander. Was he really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Also, those aren't just hitting retailers. They have already hit my humidor <laughs> at home, baby. I was lucky enough to get an entire box. So shout out to my peoples soon to review. And that will be done on the show very, very soon. Uh, just trying to work a, l- a Some couple interesting little, things, a couple little kinks out, and yeah, I think we may have a really cool episode coming up. So uh, be on the lookout for that episode. Uh, those did not just hit retailers. <laughs> so uh, down to Herf already has them. So just to note, these cigars are priced at forty dollars a stick. Woof. Uh, about <coughs> 480 bucks for a 12 count box, only 700 boxes available annually during the fall. And they're produced out of, uh, AJ Fernandez cigars out of Nicaragua. After hearing that information, I would just like to hear with what you two have to say to me. Thanks buddy. You saved us five bucks. Yeah. Thank You're you. welcome. I love you guys. Uh, that being said, Dude, I'm looking forward to that cigar, especially because I like the Sentinger so much, so I can't wait to see how this Well, works. I just love the blend of the Tabernacle. I mean, you're talking about... San Andreas. An yeah. ap- Listen, there's a Vitola for everybody. You can get these in a Robusto. You can get them in Toros. You can get just... Mm-hmm. like just. I'm talking about the regular Tabernacle line, yep. not the Havana 142 Connecticut. Uh, just Excuse me. the regular Tabernacle Broadleaf amazing cigar mm, these mm. are readily available but if you're looking for something special dude i i have the cigar the vitola is so cool 
Uh, the box, the presentation is so awesome. I would definitely, definitely make sure you're going out to check those out. They're, if you have an opportunity to buy one, just buy it. And make sure when we do our episode, smoke it along while you're listening. Yeah, found it's an it. awesome cigar. Foundation. I haven't smoked any of the Tabernacles actually. I've you, only had the you out. are in on you are in for a treat, bud. I told Jerry he was missing out on these, and Jerry took a love into them. You're missing out. You gotta smoke. You gotta smoke I, more Foundation, my guy. I've smoked the Wise Man, the Senator, the Charter Oaks. I mean, they're definitely a great company. I mean, they've obviously gotten so much press because of Rogan, like and. Not that it's undeserving or anything like that. Like that's just what kind of I feel. Maybe I'm wrong for saying this. Sorry, Nick. We know you're a fucking master blender and you're that dude. But Rogan talks about your shit. Suddenly, you have two million people that know about it. Yeah, that's like, how it works, man. That's how it works. But one degree, baby. One degree. <laughs> <laughs> one degree away from uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, so Two actually, by the way, yeah, we're going to have Johnny Pappas on. We're going to do a digital arm wrestling match this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's AI. Yeah. We're doing it through AI. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Uh, that being said, Caleb, uh, did you get to your scar review tonight? I'm all done. Let's go, baby. So this is the Krakatoa Maestro de Saka. Maestra. Uh, Maestra. Um, this does come in a coffin, right, Gio? Yes. All right, so I'm going to give it... You know, Seven coffins. It is... When you look at it, it's kind of bland. It's got the yellow band at the bottom. Uh, I'm giving it an eight with the coffin. Uh, mm-hmm. It's got the little pigtail, the little volcano tail. So eight. Uh, burn. Uh, didn't really like this at all. Nine and a half. Uh, construction. I said perfect stack of dimes. I think Jerry even agreed with that. Construction wise, giving this a ten. No issues whatsoever. This is awesome. Uh, draw. I straight cut this. Again, no issues. Fat clouds of smoke. Gave it a nine and enjoyment. Just another night with the boys. This gets a nine at the end and uh, very smoky stick. A little bit of cocoa, a little bit of coffee. Uh, like I, I did say, the sweetness at the beginning on the cold draw, but uh, that gets a forty-five and a half overall for me. So ninety-one for for my score. All right, the DTT Krakatoa Moistro de Saka. Uh, the appearance I gave this an eight point five. Uh, you take off the yellow band on the foot. It's a plain cigar. Uh, I I don't know if that's designed on purpose, but, you know, it just looks like you just, whatever. Not that big of a deal. The burn, I gave it a nine. No issues at all. I mean, the thing is still burning perfectly. Construction, I also gave it a nine. Dude, I literally picked the ashes up out of my ashtray and was able to pick them up and put them back down. Multiple times. When, when, do, when can you do that? You can't. There, there's probably a handful of manufacturers that could pull that off. Okay. This is one of them. Yeah. The draw, I gave it a nine. Uh, I straight cut mine. I know you, you said you straight cut yours? Correct. Uh, perfect. I mean, this thing, you did touch on the smoke output. A lot of smoke on this cigar. These uh, these these rabbit airs are working overtime tonight. Yeah. Uh, and they're doing it without the jet engine in the background. You know what? We actually just turned it down somehow, and it's working okay. I have no idea what happened to that thing, but the overall enjoyment, I gave it a 9.5. This cigar is fucking awesome. Uh, no bullshit. It's a fucking awesome cigar. Uh, would you say the retail on this is 18 bucks? Yeah. Eighteen dollars and seventy cents, and this is in a from a state that doesn't have tobacco tax. That's MSRP. Oh man! Wow. Yeah, this is a fucking awesome cigar. That brought my overall to a forty six ninety two overall. Definitely grab one of these. Uh, and if you got it like that, buy a box. Buy the box. Fuck it. Who cares, man? Yolo. I'm glad I got a second. Glad I got a second one because this is a great. I agree with you. Fantastic cigar. Fantastic cigar. Gio, how'd you do, bud? I'm just going to calculate something really quickly here. All right. So, got my final totals here. The Krakatoa. This is, like I said, the seventh in the the Moisture de Saka line. I'm a big fan. I'm just going to let you know, this is probably going to be a high rating for all of us here. Appearance. I gave it a nine. While I understand the uh, complaint about the cigar without the coffin just being the plain yellow band... That's been the theme for the Moisture to Saka line. The boxes themselves obviously look awesome on a shelf. 
We've all seen them. They have those individual cedar things. Like they're a talking point. You have two or three of those in a humidor. People are like, what the fuck is that? You know, normal, just the dark oaky color box. I guess I don't know what the cedar cedar box. Yeah. But it's it's darker than the traditional cedar box. It's not looking like any of these. It's definitely more of a red of hue. Okay. I don't know what the color tone is here. I'm not that fucking guy. Cedar. Burn, I gave it a nine. I touched this up like twice in the entire show. And we were fucking rambling like a motherfucker. Like everything about this burn was what I needed and I had zero issues getting the flavors I wanted. Construction, eight point five. Had a few ashes follow me. Not like massive things like the flake or two. Still incredibly put together. Like I said, I don't think I've ever seen you pick up an ash and essentially play with it all over your laptop here. You might still <laughs> be able to do it, buddy. Fucking mind boggling. Yeah, you can still pick them up. I'm doing it with mine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at that. That was a big boy. Uh, draw, I gave that a nine. I V cut mine. No issues. I've been playing around with a, some various the DTT uh, uh, cuts on these, and they seem to be pretty universal. I actually uh, like just to touch on it. Like I know we, I smoked the ribeye uh, or the meat, red meat lovers uh, beef stick, and with that flat one, I punched it. That thing was awesome, which is very odd because I've never seen a completely flat on both end cigar. But well, that's not what we're talking about right now. Good stick though. Yeah, smoked that one too recently. <laughs> Enjoyment, I gave this bad boy a 10. Like, I I enjoy this. It's box worthy. Even at the price point, it just sucks that it's only seven. I wish there were more. <laughs> but I think you would be pushing that uh, 200 mark very, very easily. That brought my overall score to a 45.5, yeah, giving me a 91 overall. Look at that, man. Me and Gio again with the same score. Is it a 91.5 score bringing us to a 92? A 91.33 overall score. Ooh, 91 overall for the DCT. Dude, that's like Krakatoa. back-to-back weeks, me and Gio with the same exact score. We did that a couple times, uh, too. Yeah. And yeah, but we did it with the exact same rating for every single topic, too. I want to touch on just like one thing. Did any of you guys feel the the oily wrap around this thing? Yeah, this thing is just held up fantastic. Where's the paper working? The only other thing I wanted to say about this, uh, the shape, the size of the Vitola of this thing, uh, I think this is one of the perfect Vitolas that you got to just smoke. It's a great size, great shape, easy to hold, not big at all by any means. This was, I don't know, man. What, what can you say about the shape of this thing? It was great. What do they call this, a Parejo? Yeah, this is a Parejo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was I, I, no issues whatsoever. I enjoy this vitola you know what i think is actually making the big difference is that uh nicaraguan criollo in there it's probably bringing out some crazy flavors well you're 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 touching on like the herb almost yeah so like reading into the uh like just that fell in your top five didn't it criollo yeah i mean well the herb that was my top that was my top last year yeah that was definitely one of the better cigars i've smoked Creole is, I mean, it's common, but it's not, if that makes sense. Like, you're not shocked when you see it, but not a lot of people do it well, in my opinion. Uh, so, reading here, this is from, you know, DTT's own release about this. So, you're going to get a sweet and spicy note on the palate, and apparently a, a flavor explosion that is sure to satisfy even the most experienced connoisseur. Uh, apparently... Pretty full-bodied comparison here. Very bold. Um, you get that a lot towards the back end. Pepper it, it, and bold. It's it's weird because like when it's coming in, it, it it tastes almost creamy, and then it gets peppery on the back end. So that sweet yeah. and spicy makes very, sense. There. Very peppery at the back end. Right. Getting get to the nub. But I don't mind a little pepper. I just don't want like a bomb. A fucking bomb, dude. Because there's nothing worse than smoking a pepper bomb. And I smoked one pepper bomb this year that. I'm going to have to redux. That was probably the Matapa by mm-hmm. Foundation. Uh, I'm going to have to redux that cigar. I, I have to do it because I just feel like when I smoked it, you know, maybe that cigar was a little more fresh than they wanted. Obviously, we smoked it before they even came out. So yeah. I want to redo that. I mean, hey, 
One of these days, we're going to have to do a Redux episode. Yeah, maybe a couple. The Reduxes are always due. That'll be, you know what we'll have to do? We'll have to do a little turn, a little Redux tournament. What cigar do you want us Ooh. to give another chance? And we'll put the vote on the Instagram. I, I hear, speaking of elections, I want you guys all in our audience, let's vote on your favorite host. Me, Jerry, or Gio. We'll put a we'll put a post out there or a story. You vote. I'll let you handle that, buddy. You 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 need the ego boost. No, no, no. It's not an ego boost. It, just, it's just, funny. It's election fitting. I hate Caleb, <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, I think he's going to do very well in this tournament. <laughs> in, in this vote, I think he'll do well. He's a man of the people, not a big man. <laughs> wow. I'm like half a person. Well, here's <laughs> the thing: your vote could count you equally know, as one vote if you vote for me. You look if like gets, one of those people from the Lollipop Guild in the Wizard of Oz. Yo, if he gets the number one spot on the podium, he would actually probably be at our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Gio's not that much taller than me, if you haven't seen that person. <laughs> I know, but it had to be said. But that go, being we'll, go said, though, we'll come up with a post. That being said, we're talking about votes, crazy things. I hope you guys had a good election day. I hope you guys got out there and voted for who you wanted to win your elections, if they're local. Um, but that being said, Caleb, any closing notes to the episode? If you guys have any other surprises, uh, disappointments or upsets in any other election, whether it's sports related or politics, let us know, give us a comment on this video and on any post that we put relating to this episode. Um, as well, just keep in contact with all our social medias. We got the Facebook, we got the Instagram, we got, uh, what else we got? We got the TikTok, and most importantly, the YouTube keep subscribing. Those numbers are going up. Grow our gang, baby. And if you guys are listening to us audio only, make sure you guys are checking us out on a Cigar Hustler Podcast Network, the number one cigar podcast network on Podbean. Uh, make sure you guys are checking out their show. They put out great products uh, and also information. Uh, but yeah, that being said, Gio, anything you got to close with, bud? Yeah, boys. Smoke them if you got them. Peace. We'll see you guys next Wednesday.